appreciate that we are really talking about interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary research. What is a discipline? We all know that. Oh, medicine, engineering, this, that. These are all disciplines. They have their norms, they have their codes of ethics, set norm values. But it is important for development for us to appreciate one important point. No one discipline can solve a developmental problem. It's not possible. It is not possible. What is called for is multidisciplinary. People coming together with a different, you know, discipline to solve. I mean, the problem. That is what we are saying in here. So next. So a multidisciplinary research is bringing discipline together to talk about issues from each other's perspective. They may collaborate, but they maintain a separation of their discipline. When the project is done, those disciplines go back to where they came from to start other projects. Seri, I don't know whether it's multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary. I'm sure if it had not been multidisciplinary, World Bank would not have given you that project. Because one of the requirements is that it must be multidisciplinary. We must talk to one another to solve any problem. Next, a multidisciplinary has degree. That's what we call additive. Each discipline maintains its own distinctiveness, but they still contribute to the solution. Non-disciplinary, integrated, synthetic. As you work more and more, you will be break, breaking the boundaries, like biomedical engineering, combining medicine, biology, engineering. It is now, having, it is now imagined as a discipline but you know those who are driving, you know, that discipline. Next. I give an example. The Organization of Fertility is an illustrative case of an additive multiplicity research. Next. At the University of Ibadan, for that Organization, people realize that, look, in a, this big market in Ibadan, you have biodegradable materials in there, and people say, well, they could convert this biodegradable to fertilizer. So what happened was that in 2001, two professors assisted by three graduate students at the Department of Agronomy, and preventing social health. using just 50,000 naira, sending research grant, they develop an organic mineral based fertilizer utilizing biodegradable municipal waste. The laboratory produced organic fertilizer was well received by farmers. They tested in the field and it was excellent. So they were bombarded by farmers for more. So one million was provided by RMRDC for prototype plant because it was just a laboratory. They knew how to scale up. And they were just agronomists, you know, and they didn't have the capacity. Next. So what happened? They came to me to say that, look, we've got this system at laboratory stage. We want to now commercialize it. We want to build a prototype that can produce a lot more rather than just laboratory. Farmers were on our neck. So fortunately for me, I had a postgraduate student who had just finished his master's. And it, that, that guy was very good in design. So I told him, I said, come. For your PhD, I'm converting you to tackle this problem. Come up with an organic fertilizer plant. Do the design and all the necessary, you know. Uh, and, but in the University of Badon, we must, I mean, any PhD project, you must defend it at the postgraduate, I mean, at the departmental level to ensure that it is really a postgraduate uh, uh, topic. It's a topic for PAD. When we presented it, people said, no way. I can uh, develop in this uh, maybe regarded as a PAD. Somebody said, that after you are finished, there will be nothing new, and therefore it will make no contribution to knowledge. Because in our PAD thesis, we say, make a statement about its contribution to knowledge. Somebody said, eh, this plant, I'm sure some people must have done it somewhere outside the country. But if you do it in this country, it is no contributor to knowledge. And I ask, whose knowledge? We have to ask ourselves, whose knowledge? We will be deceiving ourselves, thinking that knowledge is a common wealth. No way. I learned that the hard way when we were doing research on new nanomaterials. We, some of our colleagues in, 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 in Egypt, they were doing a, a research on smart materials. Smart materials, are, you use them as window curtains. When there's so much heat outside, 
It will, it will transform in such a way that that heat will not be allowed to come in. When it is so cold, any heat from outside, it will allow it. It's a material thing. We were all researching on it, and we had not got it. But we know it was possible. Suffice it to say that in one seminar, this was in Italy, a guy who had been working on it in uh, MIT, he has solved the problem. He patented it. And the company was going to manufacture it. Now, it came for our seminar. All he said was that, yeah, yeah, you. And what was critical was the transition temperature, to know the transition temperature. He had got it. He just said that at appropriate temperature, the thing will. And then the one, the one Egyptian said, tell us, what is that appropriate temperature? Blank. He didn't share it. Later he said it was patented. So, you have to be careful when people say, ah, when you publish, and you publish everything. I'm sure if it had to be Nigeria, hey, hold it at temperature 25 something, the thing, no. Hold it at suitable temperature. <laughs> so, so I said, even if somebody in Japan or something had already developed this, at least in Nigeria, nobody. So that was how the student was allowed. And come and see, even uh, as mentioned, you know, the World Bank, I mean, not the World Bank, uh, the African, uh, uh, African, uh, this thing, uh, even gave us a medal. And it became, you know, something. Yeah. Next, next, I've already, you know, next, next. Aha. Uh, this curve also, we should keep it at the back of our mind. What this one is saying is, you know, you know we all, they always accuse lecturers. They say, oh, they're just uh, having research papers, I mean, uh, use a locked up, nothing, nothing, I mean. Hmm. How many research results in a in Nigerian university system are really can be commercialized? But who will commercialize it? What does it take to commercialize, to take that result from the laboratory to the market? Organomina fertilizer, I mean, taught all that lesson that it is not easy. So, in here, we are just showing that you can have a research idea. It is a combination of, you can start with only one person with very small amount. And the idea, I mean, matured. But the question now is how do you go from that result to make it commercial? Next step, it cannot be you alone. You now have to bring other people. Next step, you need a lot more money. More funding. That is what this one is saying. That as you are going, before you get to the market, you will need more money, you will need more people to come in. Organomina fertilizer plant that started with just a professor and so on, I mean, with uh, two or three students. By the time we were market ready, we were already 22, with almost 10 students, PAD, that got their PADs in the different aspect. But we are waiting for now the guy with the money to now take it. Because it is no university that you commercialize. No, we have other things to do. If somebody would, if a lecturer who develop programming fertilizer said is the one who will be selling uh, physicians, that can be a problem that we combine all these people. That can be a, a development problem that we combine all of them, or a subset of them. But what is important is that you cannot do it alone. You must look out, you know, I mean, for people to, you know, come. And I use the example of the University of Ibadan when we were supposed to, I think I have it, yeah, next. Yeah, this one also is interdisciplinary, next. Research team of the future. Uh, it, now, this one says an important thing. He said the initial major barrier to putting people, of course, is that if you put all of these folks in a room together, it will be like a Tower of Babel. All these disciplines. Because one thing about uh, we lecturers, we tend to want to defend our discipline. Whereas, there's nothing to defend, a lot to offer a solution. So, with the result that when you are talking of a problem, they say it's a tower of Babel. There will be a lot of talking, but no one will understand one another. So, a great deal of what we need to emphasize that is on is common platform, some common lexical, whereby these folks from these different fields are able to communicate. You must have a common goal that they can com you can communicate. Otherwise, you will not get a result. Next. MDP program at University of Ibadan, and I'm almost through, okay? 
in there when we got that uh, proposal is masters in development practice it was supposed to involve air sciences college of medicine involved natural sciences college of i mean of engineering i mean on science social sciences because developmental issues we involve all this for somebody who call himself development expert that is what we have there next and management now when we were to put the proposal i asked the dean of pg school to coordinate and bring all those disciplines together suffice it to say that the people in economics they told us that they will not participate for the main reason that they think that development belongs to economics they still feel that development issue is about trade and uh, this no all attempts that we made to let them see that they were to work together with engineers and doctors and so on failed but we went ahead and we wrote a proposal and we won and it led to the center for sustainable you know development so all i was saying here is that i think which i'm sure Pro, uh, Dr., uh, professor Kodua is a, i mean he's already doing is that for you to be able to put people together to work openness to change believe in value of interdisciplinary you must believe in it willingness to work together secure knowledge mutual respect space and time and respect for different perspectives you must be you must be accommodating because somebody can give you a perspective from his own discipline that you may, may be laughable in another discipline and that's why they said that whoever is leading must have a good sense of humor to see the thing in there now okay let me move okay no, let me move okay need for communication uh -huh. this i would like to end i mean with this we say interdisciplinary it's comforting for professor okonova to do interdisciplinary research is already a professor. What is he looking for? Is, are you looking for any other promotion? No. But how easy is it for a lecturer, a senior lecturer, to be part of a, an interdisciplinary project? What are when you have to publish a paper? How many names will be there? All the contributors. DVC, when you are considering that senior lecturer for promotion, I hope you now ask him, what is the level of his contribution to the, to the paper? Do you ask? Huh? You ask? Uh -huh. You will ask. A paper that has five contributors, what percentage can somebody claim? <laughs> that happened in UI when I, we started in UI when I was busy. Somebody was to be promoted. He had this paper, three contributors and in percentage contribution he said 90 90 percent then we asked him how can you have 90 percent and three of you he said those other two people i just put their name they know nothing they know nothing i just put their names no we said no uh, they may not be there but they still contributed the point i'm making is university has to pay due attention to the system i mean reward system to make sure that you do not discourage people from collaborating you have to make sure because if the penalty of interdisciplinary research for a junior academic is too heavy it may run away i want to do it alone so that you have 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent in this journey i think that is the one i would like to go next 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 so conclusion i've already concluded with all the things i've said no next and then uh, thank you and god bless please another round of applause for our guest lecturer. You will agree with me that the lecture was indeed thought provoking. For further inquiries, 
you can visit the Uniben web. You get more information. If you have other questions to ask, you just put them down. Put your email and all of that in. For the sake of time, we will not take that. And then send it forward. It is now my pleasure to invite the center leader who will be doing some special awards presentation. Meanwhile, for our students, may I inform you that the center leader has graciously provided lunch for over a thousand students. Because it recognizes the fact that there is need for you to be catered for. So may I invite the, the center leader for this special awards presentation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Principal officers of the university. You are good point that that was indeed a very great lecture from which we have all learned a number of lessons. We hope that going forward, many of us in the university will have to work together, especially in the area of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. Because I think it hit the nail on the head. Because one of the challenges that Syria has faced since its establishment is to get people to move away from the previous adherence to silo research, where departments decide that they will not work with other departments. It's been a major challenge. And I've over and over again reminded them that Interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research is the new way to go. So, sir, we are very grateful. And in recognition of that, uh, I want to say that even though we have not quite gotten it completely right, but the Seri is working in that direction. And we pray and hope that in future, not only will Seri imbibe this habit, the entire university community will work together. Because no single development talent, as he said, can be solved by one profession alone. Even medicine, medical doctors, you know that the only thing you do is a way for patients to come to you. How they come and what happens to them and what they do after they come to you, whether they even take your drugs or not aware. There are other professionals who can help you resolve that puzzle. So on that note, let me say that Sari started in 2014. I want to say that those who have helped us have come from different departments. We are extremely grateful we are extremely grateful. Departments, the ICT department, the, the, the Dean of Students, Postgraduate School, the RV department, all faculties have been very helpful. So we want to begin a culture of appreciating those who have helped us. So that it will be a lesson that if you help us, you will not be forgiven. Forgetting, sorry, forgotten. You will not be forgotten. Then in this light, I want to recognize three distinguished persons, or on behalf of Seri, we want to recognize three distinguished persons who have supported us in numerous ways. The first is the Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor F. F. O. 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 I want to tell you that I'm saying this from the very bottom of my heart, uh, that the World Bank project, I've managed several international projects, but this one has been extremely difficult for us. In the sense that the World Bank expects not just Seri, but the entire university to show commitment. Every time they come, they want to see from the vast solar, from their eyes, that the university is committed to this project. And in more ways than one, the vast solar of this university, Professor FFO Ruanse, has supported us in many ways. In fact, even though it's not here today, this morning he was mobilizing staff and students to come to this meeting. So on behalf of Seri, I want to most respectfully uh, offer a small plaque to show the deep appreciation that the university prof has for the vice chancellor for his support to the center. Thank you. 
Vamos. The second officer we would like to honor on behalf of Seri is the Registrar of the University, Dr. Mrs. O.A. Oshodin. We call her the mother of Seri because she is the one giving us the administrative support. Every time we ask her, even when we call her and call her, she comes promptly and answers our prayers. So, ma'am, we are extremely grateful. Really, I think that this is a little way, but I don't know how else we can do it. It would have been bigger than this. We are very, very grateful for your support. Thank you, ma'am. Very grateful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Very grateful. Thank you, ma'am. The next is an officer who has been with us from the very, very beginning. When this program started, we were told that the postgraduate school was very, very important. And we needed to develop new curricula. For example, the four new programs we developed, let me say eight, were completely new. In public health, in reproductive health, health economics, and in nursing. We didn't have those programs before. So we needed to develop new curricula. Those new curricula needed to go to postgraduate school, Postgraduate school need to process them and then send it out to approve. So I will consider a panel. And I want to say that the support that we got from the dean of postgraduate school at that time, Professor V. Omozwa, was extraordinarily good. <laughs> apart from that, apart from being the dean of postgraduate school at that time, he actually became a member of the diplomatic team of Surrey. And today he's still a member. He's actually the chairman of the organizing committee for this workshop. <laughs> Building bridges for us, helping us in many ways that one. So uh, he has ended his term as dean of postgraduate school, but he remains a member of the program implementing committee of Surrey. So, so we're very grateful. So we want to honor him with this plaque. We want to thank you and tell you that every staff of the University of Bini, one way or the other, will be honored. If they show the same sort of commitment that Professor Monswa has shown to us. We are very, 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 very grateful, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So we are extremely grateful to the entire university committee, the management of the university. There are so many. The DVC academics, it has been so helpful. We are very grateful, sir. I'm sure that many, many honors will come your way as well. The DVC admin is a member of our program implementation committee. The, the, the registrar, the bursar, who has been approving everything we needed to be approved, the auditor, and so on and so forth. We are extremely grateful for the entire university for the support we have provided for this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The centre leader did not thank himself. With a round of applause, let us thank him. When you know Professor Okonofa, you know that he's a man of many parts. But one good thing about him, he does not undermine anybody. Whether you are small, he will tell you, I can learn something from you. Thank you very much, Prof, for teaching us that humility. May I now invite our Vice Chancellor, who will give us his remarks on the note of closing. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, I wish to make the following remarks, especially for our students. First of all, I want to thank the guest speaker, Professor Owe Bamiro, for doing justice to this topic. In fact, we have to hold him down because he can speak for three days without stopping, and with very illustrative uh, activities during the lecture. So I want to thank you, sir. Yes. 
But for the student particularly, I want us to take home a few points from this lecture. The first one is that we should develop critical thinking because he made an illustration. And this is what I tell my students in medicine and surgery. We must develop ourselves beyond the level of having a syllabus. I go and tell your daddy at home that they did not teach us. So we have potential. The mind space is beyond what you can conceive. And that's why Obama used to say, yes, we can. So if the lecturer taught you something, you have to know much more than he even taught you about. The reason for that concept, you have to develop it. And that is absolutely be within your purview. You won't find that in any textbook. So for students particularly in, in, in surgery or in medicine, I'm sure this applies also to life sciences and other disciplines, you should take the books and digest the books. Not to follow only, you know, this is your syllabus. There's nothing like syllabus. Because the, the, what you been, the concept you have, you have been taught in chemical engineering, you will find it appearing in production. And the same thing, you will find it also appearing in computer engineering. So it's the same thing. And that's why, you know, the World Bank is also encouraging interdisciplinary interactions. Like, like the study we are talking about, there are gynecologists there. There are social scientists. We have economists also in that, in that center. So you must be able to, like you showed a diagram, you must find yourself between the industrial space, the government, and the university. This will improve your employability status. If you only just hold up in the university, and even as a, as a researcher, your research is only there for university to look at without transforming to industry, then you have a problem. So I want us to take this one home. As we read any topic, we should look at the, the, the practicability of that concept and how it can be applied. And indeed, you should apply it. And perhaps you can go back to the lecturer and even discuss with him and you know, even lead him to greater research. The other, the other point here is the issue of team play. In all professions, nobody can do it alone. You must respect other professions, your seniors and juniors in your own field. Learn to collaborate. In order to collaborate, to, to be part of a team, you must first of all learn to respect other people and accept their views. Even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't you know, agree with your own, you must, first of all, try to understand their concepts. And then we play that role, you'll be respected as well. So you respect other people, they will respect you. From in my own field, this is a, a core topic that we teach every day. You can't be a team, you can't be a good doctor without being a team player. I'm a surgeon. I can't go to the theater if the patient is not, is not carried in by the porter. I can't operate if the anesthetic doesn't make the patient go to sleep. And somebody has to give me the instrument. And I can't do the operation alone. I have my resident doctors assisting me. And after the operation, then the instruments have to be washed by somebody. So this is just an example of it. I'm sorry I'm being biased using my own profession. But I'm sure the same thing goes on in the beauty industry. In the beauty industry, you have the structural engineer. Well, I'm also a builder because my wife is an architect. So you need an architect. You need a builder. You need the you need the you need the um, the uh, what do you call it, the social engineer. You need the quantities of your uh, that's another industry. So in all industry there must be team play. I want my students particularly, please remember to be team player. And I also teach my students this always because sometimes you see somebody say he's a doctor, he's a this and that. No pilot can fly a plane without the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the engineer that's going to go with him. So let us learn to be team players. And lastly, I want to close on the concept of as you think, so you be. Because the proverb, in Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so you see. 
So think that you are a great guy. I know you have great potential as students. You should not be a great courtist. Nobody can, uh, uh, can probably come out and say, you know what, I'm a great courtist. That's why also you find that also in the Bible that whatever is good, whatever, whatever is of good report, that's what you should be proud to say. Anything you cannot probably come out and say, then you know that that thing is bad. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor, for the closing remarks. Professor V. E. Amosua, the chairman of the Seri Inaugural Committee, will now give the vote of thanks. Professor Amosua, please. Um. I would like to stand on uh, the protocol already established by the PRO. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are almost at the end of this uh, event. And uh, my duty is to thank everyone present, in particular the guest lecturer, Professor Bamiru. At the time, we were thinking of who to invite for this lecture. The center leader proposed his name and said, when he comes, you are going to be loaded with knowledge. You are going to have en enough things to, to uh, laugh about because, you know, he's always lacing his... Uh, presentation with uh, hilarious uh, uh, stories. And I'm sure that everybody here today is not disappointed because it has been a very great lecture. And so, sir, on behalf of the university and Seri, we thank you very much for taking our time, your you know, busy schedule, to be here with us. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we thank the university management, ably led by our amiable vice chancellor, Professor FFO Arumese, who has always given uh, uh, Seri all the deserved uh, encouragement and support. So we thank you very much, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the committee that uh, put this together I also want to thank all members of that committee for a job well done. But in particular, let me thank the, uh, the, the center leader, a very energetic man, very, you know, it's a hardworking person. When you are with him, you cannot but just work. He will spur you on to, do, you know, to go on and on, you know, doing what you are supposed to do. And it's a, a, a team player, a very wonderful team player because he brings everybody to, together. He carries everybody together in this uh, the money, I mean uh, center management meeting. So, sir, we well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an as, you are an asset to Seri, and we pray that God will lengthen your days. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for coming, and I thank you, I thank you, and I thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in Professor Amina's committee, they will tell you do not do what you are not supposed to do in the university so that you don't end up spending money on what will be destroyed. In the same vein, we want to advise our students to listen to necessary instructions and do the needful. Just be very quiet, get what you are supposed to get, and thereafter, continue with your lecture for today. For our invited guests, there is a lunch on. 
for all our invited guests at the banquet hall of the University of Benin. Please, all our guests, be there. If you know as a guest, you've not been given a sheet of paper, just come there. As a student, please, you have lectures after now. Make sure you go and continue with your classes and uh, don't do what you are not supposed to do. May we please rise. Professor Osadolo will close us in prayers as we close. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Please, for those who are moving, can you be still for a while? Those who are moving, please be still for a while. We want to talk to God and thank Him for today. By your hands, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we give you all the thanks, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory for the success of this inaugural lecture organized by Surrey University of Benin. Lord, we thank you for the great wisdom you have given to the lecturer, the former vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, Professor Olufemi Adebisi Bamiro. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the knowledge that he has imparted to us today. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are the source of wisdom and knowledge. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we also know that from today, the University of Benin will never be the same again with this knowledge we have gained. You know, Heavenly Father, for all those who have traveled from far and near, we commit our return journeys unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that the power of your Holy Spirit that will give Sari the strength to continue with this program to uplift the name of our university to your honor and glory, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are living now, we are not living in your presence. Guide us wherever we go, that all honor and glory be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name I pray.